Today I would like to take you to Serralunga d'Alba and uh, briefly discuss uh, uh, the quality of its Barolo. Now all Barolo uh, lovers know that Serralunga is very important and home to some of the finest Barolo ever. In particular, we have to point out that Serralunga, together with Barolo and Castiglione Falletto, is one of the three townships that are entirely included in the Barolo appellation. But also, Serralunga did a very good job at analyzing and defining its uh, single vineyards. There are, in fact, uh, 39 names of single vineyards, plus the appellation del Comune di Serralunga d'Alba. So, in total, 40 different appellations. If you look at the map, you see that Serralunga is divided by the rest of the Barolo appellation uh, from a little brook. And in a way, it stands by itself. It's really a subzone of the Barolo terroir. Uh, but also it has different elevations. It starts from the bottom of the valley at about 200 meters of elevation. It grows all the way to the village of Serralunga, and then even more so towards uh, Rodino to reach the highest point at 450 meters of elevation. So we have different situations, different exposures, and uh, um, different terroir. Although, in general, we can say that Serralunga is the classic Serravalian terroir, the clay, the, the hard clay uh, that makes uh, Barolo so special. To be more specific, the Serralunga terroir varies from the classic Tortonian, the very tight marl and clayish, to Serravalian, which is slightly looser. But still, in general, everybody agrees that Serralunga delivers the classic full-bodied, powerful Barolo that are meant to be kept and aged slowly. Now, I have some experience of vinifying Barolo from Serralunga, and I brought here a sample of my own Barolo uh, Vintage 2011. We're now in 2021. This Barolo is 10 years old. And in my experience, Barolo from Serralunga begins to show its best when it's about 10 years old. The color kept uh, its uh, original deep garnet in the middle, then it veers towards orangey, and finally there's a little little yellowish uh, hue around, it's much to be expected, and uh, nice legs that show high alcohol, in fact it's 15% alcohol. The bouquet is intensely ethereal, of course it has developed uh, tertiary aromas, in particular dried mushrooms, uh, there's a touch of uh, oak, uh, plenty of licorice, leather, uh, black pepper, even a touch of cigar, which I don't mind. It's, uh, it's classic Barolo from Serralunga, a bit austere if you want, but it definitely has the character of, uh, of the Serralunga terroir. Very warm and powerful, very long, savory. There's a good depth still. The tannins have lost the edges and have acquired a very nice uh, roundedness. They've kept the depth, they've kept the, the good acidity, the energy. I'm surprised by the good positive energy that I feel and I taste in this Barolo. When I think of Barolo from Serralunga, I really think of a Barolo that stands by itself, that is highly recognizable. It's, uh, it's, it's classic, it's sober, it's a bit austere, but it's always very mm, rich full-bodied, present to itself. It's got quite, quite a personality, quite a character. And I think we could take Serralunga as a whole, as, as, as a grand crew by itself. Of course, if you go into the details, then you will find out about single vineyards. Some are very famous, very outstanding. We don't even have to mention them. But definitely there is a character that we can define as Barolo from Serralunga.